This actually looked like a scene from Get Out, the stand-up version. It's, <laughs> it's just frightening. There's a lot of white people here. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just for me. Y'all don't realize how scary this just looked. You know what's funny? It feel good, because I, I mean, like, my money has changed. I'm, like, not broke anymore. And that's a good thing when, you, you know, you actually have some money. But my family ended up finding out, and that's the scariest thing in the world. My uncle called me. I don't know if anybody got the same family. You got one person in your family that everybody called when something's going wrong, somebody needs something. He called me one day. I answered the phone, like, hello? He said, your turn, and hung up. I was like, who is this? <laughs> like, what you mean, my turn? And he called me up. He called me back and said, look, man. My brother died, and, you know, I told him, I'm on vacation. You got more money now, so you're going to have to be the one to take care of everything. So they all going to call you. They're in the living room now. They're meeting. They're going to call you on speakerphone, and they're going to ask you for the money. I said, what? And then you hung up again. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so then I get the next call. It's the whole family. They all, <laughs> they all in the living room. They're like, look here. Uh, I know you heard that your uncle died, and uh, we all came up with all we can come up with, you know, between all 15 of us. We was able to come up with $94. All we need is 9,744 more. Like, what? I was mad because I'm like, this dude, like, he was on drugs the whole time, and he stole from everybody. So, like, we finna pay for a funeral that somebody owes us money? That don't make no damn sense. Then I feel bad because then my grandmother, you know, that's why I paid for it. That's her son, and she was sad about it, and she was crying, and she was hurt. I'm like, all right, Grandma, I got you. I don't care about the rest of everybody else. I'm doing this because this is your son. This is for you. Then they called me back. Well, your grandmother don't want to fly because she don't like to fly nowhere. Somebody had to get on a Greyhound bus with her <laughs> for two days all the way down to Mississippi. I said, let me say this. She's my grandmother, so that's your mama. You know what I mean? That's two different things. I don't have to ride with y'all. Y'all can put the grandmother on me. That's your mother. So they did. So now we're on this Greyhound bus. I don't know if anybody ride the Greyhound bus recently. Greyhound ain't not like how it used to be. Remember the Greyhound was beautiful, it was nice. It's the scariest place to go to now, the Greyhound station. Matter of fact, I was the only person with a luggage bag there. Everybody's looking at me like, who the hell is that with the luggage bag? Everybody else had grocery store bags tied up with their clothes in it. <laughs> Walk through the Greyhound said, well, who the hell is Richie Rich? I get on there, I'm a grandmother. <laughs> she want a snack from the, you know, they got the little snack places. That, first of all, don't ever buy a hot dog or anything from a great house. That, you don't know how long that hot dog been spinning. <laughs> I walked over there, the, the hot dog had a mustache and a face. I'm like, it grew into a person. I think it worked here. <laughs> we get on the bus. It's a good ride now. You know, nowadays, you know, it ain't just regular patrons on the bus. Sometimes they have people who just got out of jail randomly on your bus, which is the scariest thing in the world. And my grandmother just kept trying to speak to everybody. She's trying to pray for people. You know what I mean? I'm like, Grandma, you can't say nothing. These are convicts. Let them be, let them mind their business. She's like, no, he needs my prayer. She started grabbing his dude hands. So she's still hungry because I didn't get this dirty hot dog from the snack station. So we stopped at a rest stop, right? I got the McDonald's there. And I'm gonna say this, like, <laughs> if you're on a bus, on a Greyhound bus, most of the people on the bus bring their own food. <laughs> Nobody get the McDonald's. I come on the bus with the Four Piece Nugget, everybody stop eating their sandwiches. Oh, ooh, ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> Who is fancy pants with a Four Piece Nugget? All I got was four pieces. <laughs> hey, Richie Rich, you got to share those nuggets with everybody on the bus. It's only a four piece, I don't care. <laughs> Matter of fact, look, you ain't gotta get nobody else a nugget. Can, let me get a dip. He wanted to dip his sandwich in my sweet and sour sauce. Come on, brother, let me get a dip. No big deal. Let me dip my sandwich in it. <laughs> now I'm about to fight this dude over nuggets. And then he threatened me. He didn't give me the, like, you know what's funny? He gave me a threat that I thought as I became a grown-up, I wouldn't ever hit his threat again. Anybody here wear glasses, you hit the same threat for the rest of your damn life. He didn't threaten to punch me in the face. He didn't threaten to shoot me. He's like, look here, you don't give me no nuggets. I'm going to knock your damn glasses off your face. I'm like, you can't come up with nothing new. So we get there, this long trip, start seeing all my family there, and I give them a speech too, like, you know, because I pay for everything, and we had this limo, and I'm like, look here, y'all, I pay for this funeral. Ain't nobody else riding this limo with me. <laughs> it's just me, I'm showing up by myself, VIP, to my uncle, <laughs> my 
Uncle Freddy Dauphine funeral. And then they made us like send out doves to him too, which I thought was weird. Like, he don't deserve doves. People who should get doves that die like in war or a hero. Not nobody who did drugs and stole from you your whole life. You don't give him a dove, maybe a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much, y'all. I'm a little real. That's my time. Peace out.